All right, good. So again, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the uh, July, end of July uh, meeting for the Health and Safety Excellence Group. And again, as I said, I uh, hope everybody's enjoying their summer so far. i uh, got a few things to, uh, to go through uh, this afternoon with you. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, please unmute and ask. I do have the, the chat box open, but I'm not always looking at it. So it's always better just to unmute. Don't, uh, don't be shy to interrupt me. If you have any questions as I'm going through any of the uh, updates or anything related to the program, uh, as we go through the agenda this afternoon. And um, so let's get right to it here. So I'm going to start with uh, just an update on uh, making sure everybody's tracking their topics and just quick reminders on that. Um, just a review of the uh, email I sent out with regard to the small business initiative. And then the major part of this meeting dedicated to the updates to the program. Uh, topics were mainly updated. So, uh, and I think for the last two meetings, I've kind of been giving you the heads up. It's coming, it's coming. It's here now and it's live and implemented. So I'm going to spend most of today's meeting uh, taking through those updates. And then our typical next meeting agenda suggestions topic. Well, I probably won't do a topic review today um, because most of the, the meeting time will be taking up with the updates. Um, Q&A next meeting. Um, and again, any questions, just because I'm no, not, not doing a, a specific topic review, feel free to ask any questions about any specific topics, um, any, uh, regardless. All right. Um, so the typical topic cycle status reminder. So as always, remember, it is your responsibility to track your expiry date um, and to make sure that you at least get all the submissions to me uh, at minimum four weeks prior to expiry date. So if you've got one topic left, uh, that should kind of be the last one that's kind of dragging, if anything, and that should be coming at four, you know, prior to the four week mark before you actually expire. And that makes sure that whatever you have left, um, gives us time to troubleshoot any updates, changes, modifications, feedback that I give you, because if it uh, comes to me, you know, three days before um, your expiry date, then you won't have time. If there's feedback, uh, things missing or anything, you won't have any time to, to, uh, to submit that before the expiry date. And uh, it's a very bad practice to send all five topics, uh, you know, the week of your expiry. That's also a very bad idea. And I still get the odd person that uh, that does that. And it puts you and me, especially, you know, under pressure to make sure we get everything reviewed, updated, changes made, updates, uh, and, and get it all uh, sent in for, uh, for validation. Uh, and that, um, you know, that's not fair to myself, really, uh, to try to, to get that done. Um, that fast because I'm looking after all of you plus other work that I do as well. So, um, so try to do that. I do send out the 365 day cycle kind of uh, um, flow guide that I do recommend that you do. So it kind of takes you through and says at this month you should have at least one, and then at this month two topics, three topics, and by the time you get to, you know, nine, ten months, you're you're done, right? Um, the other, the other part of this is making sure that you submit in in uh, your evidence properly. Um, uh, you know, again, uh, we talk about it. Making sure you split your your evidence packages. You know, your combination of topics of of, of evidence together, uh, combined into a plan package. Do check and act if you need it. Uh, that is the. I find that's the simplest, easiest way for myself and validators to follow. If you send one package with everything, then we got to figure out, okay, which is the plan, which is the do, which is the check, which is the act. Um, and if you haven't listed it properly in your evidence story, then it's very hard to decipher and, and creates confusion uh, and, and may even lead to uh, additional evidence required from a validator because you just can't figure out what you meant by what, right? Um, your evidence packages should mimic identically the list of documents in your evidence story. 
So uh, remember, that's all that goes in the right-hand column under evidence packages. It's just a list of things that you have uploaded to support the narrative under Plan Do Check Act, all right? And then the last thing you do when you do your uploads for evidence is change it from draft to ready for provider review and uh, click save, all right? The best way to verify that everything went well is to go, after you've saved everything, go back to the portal, go to your topic and click on the, the view uh, evidence uh, down uh, drop down. And if you can see the uploads that you did and you can open it yourself from the portal, that means I'll be able to open it. If you can't see them there and are able to open them, I won't be able to open them. And that, that kind of just verifies that you did the upload correctly. You didn't miss a click anywhere um, because you're able to open the packages that you just uploaded. So it's a good way to verify that, all right? And also as a back uh, a backstop to forgetting to click ready for provider review, always send me an email saying, hi, James, I've got two topics ready for you to review, right? Because um, if you forgot to switch it from draft to ready for review, um, I have no way of knowing that you've got topics sitting in the portal waiting for my review. Okay, the, so, so um, the only way is if you change the status and you send me an email, all right? So that's pretty much, and, and a lot of folks are in that process now where you're uploading, uh, you know, coming up uh, in the fall to expiry dates and, and, and things like that. So, so make sure you keep track of things, all right? Any questions on... Um, Uploads, the detail of uploading is in the portal user's guide. It takes you screen by screen now on how to how to do it. Um, so you can follow that. They, there's even videos in your resource section of the portal um, as well. And as always, if you have any issues or questions, you know where to find me. Any questions on this? I don't see. As I glance to the chat, I don't see anything and I don't hear anybody, so. All right, uh, small business initiative. As you know, it is the, um, the, the double rebate for small businesses, companies that qualify for as a small business. And it's also the thousand dollars for joining uh, support payment. And um, you'll, you will know if you're a small business because when you join, I tell you. <laughs> so, so uh, any of you that are, you know who you are already. Um, and the good news is, as I sent out, I think, an email a couple of weeks ago, that they've extended it for a year. So uh, the expiry now is December 2024. So for those of you that qualify and are kind of in, a, in the middle of a cycle now, as soon as you end that cycle, you can start another one and do another cycle, um, get the $1,000 again, and try to get a bunch of topics done again before December 2024. So it gives you a chance probably for another cycle uh, at the double rebate um, uh, program, right? So, so that's, that's good because it was going to end this December, right? So, um, and we have no idea. They're going to, you know, they keep saying they want to do something around the small businesses, but uh, they're looking at the studies that have been done on the program um, and, and, and uh, they'll, you know, they want to come up with something. We just, as soon as I know, you'll know. Um, so, so um, we'll we'll keep um, track and see where where things will go uh, for after 2024. But at least we've got another year with the program as is status quo. All right. Any questions on the small businesses? Any of you that still qualify? Right, again, I don't hear or see any typing. So updates, okay. So this is the biggest uh, changes that were coming. They warned us about them for a while. Now they are here. The first one, and this is all related to basically topics. So currently, some of you may have done or, or know that uh, recognition of hazards is a topic, right? Well, that's gone. So recognition of hazards, that title, does not exist 
anymore. Okay. They've removed that topic and replaced it with three topics. So there are three new topics here. One is called hazard identification. The other one is hazard reporting and workplace inspections. So when you go to your topic selection, uh, these are all in level one still. Um, there will be uh, these three topics to pick from. If you've already done the recognition of hazards topic, you would have done probably all three of these already. Uh, so unless they fit the uh, topic selection criteria of significant gap, uh, you can't just redo them because they've pulled them out of the old recognition and, and, and they're new, right? So, um, so, so, uh, but for those of you who haven't, they're another standalone option, each topic. They also, um, I sent out the new topic guide. So the topic guide has the topic requirements and we will uh, take a look at them um, uh, after I go through the updates. So you can just kind of, we can just kind of see what, what it, they look like in case you haven't looked at the topic guide. So just keep those in mind. Um, as now we get into, you know, as you get into the new cycle topic selection as possible uh, topics, okay? Um, so, so uh, you know, that brings us to, to uh, you know, 38, uh, the 39th topic is going to be the next one that you're going to see in the next update. Uh, but there's a total of 39 topics now in the program instead of 36. All right. Um, and we'll go through uh, briefly the topic, what the topic requirements look like, so you get an idea of what the topics are in a moment. Um, I'll switch over to the topic guide. Okay. So that's a straightforward swap and creation of new topics. The next big change is in the control of hazards. So they added a new topic called Control of Hazards Basics. And this is one I personally have been pushing for for a couple of years. It's finally, they finally listened and, and, and did it. And so the Control of Hazards Basics is a standalone topic on the process or procedure to control hazards, all right? Which applies the hierarchy of controls and everything, right? And before they had that, they just had the control of hazards topic, which is still there. But when people picked it, they had no idea because there was no real process to control hazards. They didn't have a procedure or an approach to do it. Um, so it was kind of all over the place. So really the recommendation is that you should have the control of hazards basics before you start controlling hazards through the control of hazards topic. So this new, creation of the control of hazards is the 39th topic. It's the control of hazards basic. So again, level one, when you go to your topic selection, the drop downs, one of them will say control of hazards basics. And they've also got in the new topics guide, all the topic requirements to write the procedure for control of hazards basics and all the other topic requirements applying the uh, hierarchy of controls. So that's a new one. And again, could be an option for some of you that don't have a, a uh, you know, all the topic requirements met in, in, in uh, some other uh, policy or procedure you currently have, then this could be another uh, selection as well. Or significant gap on your existing one, if we can show significant back gap, because that is also a topic selection category, right? So that is a new. Then we go to the existing control of hazards that's been there since day one. And what they've done with that one is kind of expanded it, in essence, um, given more options for use of it through uh, three uh, what they call options or approaches. And so from this day forward, when you pick a control, when you're going to do a topic under control of hazards, when you go to the portal and you click on it, I'll show you kind of the uh, snapshot of the screenshots. You'll you have to select which option or approach of control hazards you're going to work on, and there's three of them. Okay, 
One is you're going to work on a hazard control program. The other one is you're going to work on a very specific hazard, which is kind of what we've been doing all along, like you know, slip, trip, and falls, working at heights hazards, you know, that kind of a, sp a very musculoskeletal, repetitive strain hazards. So you're you're going to work on that. And then the third one is that you're going to address all the hazards related to a specific process, task, or a piece of equipment, right? So you're going to develop a, an SOP or or you know a task like uh, loading and unloading of trucks. Okay, you're going to develop a whole proper safe procedure for that. That could be a top. That's kind of a process uh, or a task. Okay, so so what they're asking is is we do our best to select the align it with the best option. Okay, it's not a disaster if we don't, um, but they're going to try to track and make sure that we do. Uh, as long as you meet the topic requirements, you apply the hierarchy of controls. If we misaligned, if it's a, you know, a number one or two or three, it's not going to come back as an AAR, but we'll, we'll probably say, you know, for next time, you know, this type of uh, approach, it, it should be a number three instead of a number one or whatever, right? But we're not going to get too hung up on that, but you will have to make a decision on which one. I can certainly help you. Uh, also, in your evidence story document, um, you will, uh, I've updated it. So when we do the topic selection rationale, rationale form, when I see a COH picked, a control hazard picked, um, um, I've, I've asked that you also uh, list the approach. Uh, and if you forget that, I'll remind you, well, we need the approach, right? So <laughs> uh, is, it, is it one, two, or three, right? Which one of them, right? Um, or just, or, or you write the text of the approach that you're going to be applying and using as well, right? And they've also updated the topic guide to kind of uh, give examples. I'll show you those uh, with drop downs even. Uh, so we've got drop downs for the hazard control program and drop downs for the uh, specific hazards. There is no drop down for the address all hazards of uh, process, task, or piece of equipment. Right. So this is a little bit of kind of what it looked like now. If you were going to do topic selection, and in your drop down list for le level one topics, you picked the control hazards, and it'll say approaches. Okay. As soon as you click that, then the box at the bottom will open up. Okay. And you'll have to select one of the drop downs from develop a program, you would click on that if it's going to be a program, and then you'll get a whole drop down options uh, of a whole bunch of, of, of possibilities. And they're all listed in the guide. We're going to look in a minute. You can click from pick from one of those. And if yours is not there, they have the other. So you can always type in the specific um, hazard control program, right? Then there'll be a drop down for identifying uh, identify and address a specific hazard. So there'll be a list of sample ones you can pick from or other. And then the the address all hazards will just give a, a, the explanation probably from the guide. Um, and then you'll type in, you know, loading and unloading of trucks or or uh, you know uh, any any sort of a process operation of the of the you know the the punch press machinery or whatever it is that that is one that you're going to pick to, to uh, address because you have, say, a lot of placements that do operate a, uh, uh, or work on a very specific piece of equipment that you're going to create something specific for that, right? Um, so that is what you'll, uh, what you'll see, all right? And again, the topic requirements, um, the general topic requirements, Control hazard um, is in the topic guide. And then in addition, anything specific to an approach is also in the topic guide. Right. So yeah, this is a good time to let's take a look and see what they've done now to the topic guide. All right. So uh, was it last week or the week before I sent out an email with the 
new members guide, updated members guide, updated topics guide, and told you to delete the old members guide. So the old members guide had the, the program information, the excellence program information and, and whole, all the, the ins and outs of the program and the topic requirements rolled into one. So delete that and it gets replaced with two documents, the standalone topics guide and the standalone members guide, which doesn't have any of the topic information uh, on it. Um, so pretty well, the only things that have changed is information related to the changes that I just went through. So all the other topic requirements, the way the program works, everything is the same. The only difference is the changes I just went through um, and, and, uh, and that's it. They haven't uh, changed topic requirements for other topics or anything like that. They are basically identical to uh, what you have now. They've just added these changes that we're gonna go through, all right? So from now on, I'll, I'll reference you, uh, you know, when we're working through to either the topic guide or if it's a question related to the program, to how rebates work and the topic selection criteria, it'll be in the members guide, right? So the general kind of uh, information on the, on the program. So the topics guide, you'll see the list now. We'll see here, the control of hazards basics is here. The control of hazards is here. Here's the hazard ID, the reporting and inspections. So those are all the new, new ones. Everything else that was in level one is the same and level two is the same, level three is the same. So nothing else has changed. So let's take a look at the newly added, the hazard ID, okay? So the layout, same thing, recommended prerequisites. And remember, they're only recommended, they're not have tos. Um, and then you'll get your typical summary, right? And, and this is really a process internally to uh, uh, do your, your hazard inventory or um, identify all your hazards in the plant, create a, a hazard registry, you know? So many of you have done this already um, and it's part of an existing policy or procedure, but if not, um, then it's, it could be an option for a new topic if you don't have a formal approach to capturing all the hazards that apply to your offices and your client sites, the types of placements that you do, right? And that's what this registry would be. And there is a topic requirement. It says, you know, you have a, you define it, you assign roles and responsibilities, you train people, you actually uh, do the, the hazard registry, you create it, um, and then, you know, make sure your procedure has a review period, uh, how people are informed, consulted. And this is the minimum that your registry should include. So all the topic requirements are there for the, for the new uh, topic. The next one, which is new, is hazard reporting. So again, a process that um, formally allows your, your office staff, your, your temps to report hazards. And how does it work and what do you do with them, right? Um, so, so this is proactive, not injury reporting, which is, or accident reporting, that's reactive. This is hazard reporting proactive. So again, how do you, how, what process have you implemented for uh, everybody? And then you have a procedure of, of how you collect the, the reports, how you classify them. There's a requirement for a rating, an ABC, um, you know, including you know, who's responsible, how they're reviewed, what you do with them, how you add them to your uh, registry, which is the topic before this, right? So they kind of go together in that sense where it adds to your registry. Um, and, and the people, the, the review process and, and how people are informed of changes. So these are the minimum requirements in the procedure. And it says the written procedure will. So you have to, as in most topics, have some sort of a procedure, policy, whatever you want to call it, that includes the minimum topic requirements, right? And again, don't, and it says, do not duplicate anything from your injury illness reporting because 
hazard reporting is more proactive, as I said. So that is a new one, something to keep in mind for your next topic selection if, uh, if it's something you don't already have or you have a significant gap, all right? And then the third one new, workplace inspections, is mainly focused at two levels. One, obviously the, the legislated inspections for your either health and safety rep or your uh, committees, if you work in any uh, uh, area where you have your own committee set up or you at a client site where you have, you know, like 50 workers there and you, and you are established your own committee um, or the health and safety rep, which you need to have. And then you do your monthly office inspections. Um, so this one could only apply to your branches. Um, and, and it's the formal process for doing that. Or, and it also includes any other inspection activity under health and safety that you do um, that's not covered under any other topic because your like first aid kit inspections would be covered under your first aid topic, right? So you can't double dip from that perspective. Uh, if the only one is the legislated monthly inspection, then that's the one you're going to develop the program around. But again, these are the minimum requirements, right? And it even references there the, uh, you know, to identify legal requirements for inspections, right? So um, the typical minimum procedural requirements are all listed in the topic guide. And there, it does give you a reminder that, again, we don't include pre-use inspections here because pre-use inspections is a standalone topic on its own. Okay, so you don't need to repeat that work. That will be anything to do with pre-use. It's under that topic, not here. This will be everything else. Okay. So those are the three new topics that replace the old recognition of hazard topic. Then the control hazard basics is here, okay? And as I said, this is basically developing a procedure that you use to control hazards. And once you have this procedure, then you apply it for any control hazard topic that you pick in the future. So this one has the prerequisite recommended of hazard ID risk assessment, um, but um, really it should, they should include it's the, main prerequisite before you start even using the control hazard topic, right? So if you come to me and say, I want to, you know, James, I want to do slip drop ball control hazard. The first thing I'm going to ask you is, do you have the control hazard basics? Do you have a process that you're going to use to work on slip trip and fall? And if your answer is no, I'm going to say, okay, well, you got two topics. You can do your slip trip and fall, but you should also do control hazard basics, <laughs> right? Um, so, so, um, it's going to help you for any future selection of the um, control hazard topic. Um, let me just pause here because I see a question. Hello, do we need to adjust any COA topics already underway or do any changes apply to the next round? Uh, the question is yes. So if you are currently working on a control of hazard topic, you don't your, your action plan's already selected. So you don't, you, you can't go, even if you wanted to, you can't go back and click the approach because once your action plan is approved, you're locked out of making any changes to control hazards. So we don't need to go back there. But what we need to do is we need to develop it under one of the approaches and it needs to meet the topic requirements that I'm going through right now because they will be validated under these changes. So anyone currently working on any control of hazard topic needs to, uh, 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 um, you know, we need to, to determine which approach you, your current selection falls under. And we've got to make sure that the evidence story meets the topic requirements that you see today. Okay, they're not, there's nothing's been revolutionarily changed. You always have to apply the hierarchy of control and all that stuff, right? And you'll see that in a, in a moment when I uh, switch over to the uh, control hazards uh, topic. This is the basics. So the control hazard basics is a new topic 
which allows you to do a standalone topic related, dedicated only to the procedure for a application of controlling hazards, the method you're going to use. And there are minimum requirements. Of course, the application of the hierarchy of controls is, is, is mandatory in that and that write up. And these are the topic requirements for control of hazard basics. Again, the you have to have a written procedure for how you're going to go, who's assigned, the training, the process, how you're going to uh, incorporate, make sure legislative requirements are built in, uh, the application of the hierarchy, okay, the the follow up, the confirmation of controls, the period, you know, procedure review, all of this has to be built into this topic. So this is a foundational procedure, as it says there, so that you can use it for the control of hazards, which has always been there, except this is the one that they've redefined and expanded, right? So, so here, you know, when you're picking this, you can see that the prerequisite includes control hazard basics. And to me, it's not, it's more than just a recommended in this particular case, because if you don't have a good, clear approach to this, then it gets very confusing on what is required. Um, I know many of you, you know, have, we have to go back and, and say, look, you have to apply the hierarchy of controls. Well, if you've done the controllers of basics, all those questions are gone because your procedure that you've already created already introduced you to the concept of hierarchy of controls. So it's not even going to be a conversation now. It's just going to be, did you apply it <laughs> when you picked your control of hazards? So there's a summary section here, just kind of uh, uh, overview of what the topic's about. Uh, you can repeat it as always. You can repeat it. You can, you know, your action plan uh, for the five topics can be five control of hazards. Nothing's changed if you wanted to use it for five control of hazards. It's just that each of them then gets an approach and has to apply the topic requirements. Okay. So that's what they've introduced here, the approach, right? Um, minimum requirement always will be that you apply the hierarchy. So it doesn't matter which of the three approaches, you'll always have to apply the hierarchy. And you can explain how the hierarchy applies to your control hazard topic approach, either in the evidence story or writing your procedure. Doesn't matter as long as it's there, it's fine. It doesn't matter where it is. We'll just point the validator to where you've said, here's what we did for elimination, here's what we did for substitution, engineering, administration, and PPE, as it applies to my hazard, all right? So that is a, 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 a requirement, doesn't matter which approach. And these are the requirements, the general requirements for all approaches. Again, once you select them, here are the three approaches listed that you're gonna select from and the minimum requirements that apply to all of them are listed, okay? So there's some general minimum requirements, again, because you have to apply the hierarchy, you have to have a documented control program, whatever the, the control is, which would be within your policy procedure, the training piece, everything, okay? So again, I can't uh, um, reiter reiterate enough how important it is that it's easy to see within your procedure that every one of these bullets is uh, been addressed and answered uh, because that's what the validators do, right? If you miss that topic requirement, you're gonna get an AUR, an additional evidence required uh, come back to you, all right? When you pick the approaches, this is the first one, right? The hazard control program approach, okay? The drop down will look like this, except you can click on any of these, but then there'll be another one that says other. So these are examples of control programs. And again, they just, you know, uh, I must have picked from the most common ones people have been doing or, or they've seen uh, people work on in the program to date and, and included them in the suggested list. But, you know, uh, you always have the option of other. If it's a program, a control program, then you just add it here, okay? You'll click the other and type it, what the program is, 
All right. So that's what you'll see in that drop down. If you happen to pick the approach for specific hazard, then the drop down is listed under chemical hazards, physical hazards, musculoskeletal, biological, safety. Whoops, safety hazards and psychological. And then, of course, other, just in case it's not here, right? But you can see this focuses on a very, a very specific hazard. All right. And then the third option does not have a drop down. So there's no other information on it, which is the control of hazards related to a specific process, task, or piece of equipment. Example, uh, receiving and handling vaccines packed in dry house. I don't like that example, but, you know, I like loading and unloading a truck, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, so that is the other option. And again, you would click that and then just type in, um, you know, whatever the this best, you know, few word description of what you're going to be working on that relates to that approach. All right. And so this approach selection is a must, no matter which, you know, anytime you select the control hazard topic, it'll be part of that page for the topic selection um, page now only activated when you pick controlled hazards. I think that's everything. everything in the guide. So, you know, some options to to work from um, as uh, as 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 with any topic selection, it must fit the five are in the members guide that hasn't changed. So remember category one or the first one is, is it's a new topic, which is kind of the simplest then the so we have to show through the rationale form that there's a significant gap that stays the same. Third one, significant change in the workplace. Okay, and you have to do rationale form for that. Fourth one was control of hazards. Okay, and a fourth and the control of hazards could be a, a, a one, a two or three. So you can have a four and a one, a four and a two, a four and a three, right? Because it can have a control of hazard that's new, control of hazards that you're picking that all you already worked on that has a significant gap or control hazards that qualifies because it's a significant change, right? Uh, and then the last option was a deferred topic and deferred from the previous year uh, or any other year action plan, just haven't completed it yet, can also be a one, a two, a three, or a four. It could be deferred control hazard, right? So it could be a combo uh, one, but it, it tells them that by using the deferred that you know, you've started it in the past and uh, you didn't finish it um, or you never started at all and you want to pick it again. Right. So it does, I think, give us a little more flexibility to consider um, these changes when we're doing topic selection, hopefully. All right. Caroline, did I ask, answer your question? I didn't see a follow-up comment, so I'm assuming I did answer your question, but I just wanted to check, make sure I did. Uh, any other questions on the changes? Any questions on the changes? As they publish more information or any examples i think you know they're going to get a lot of questions probably because anything new and has to be debugged um, i'll share with you in future meetings or immediately depending on how critical it is um and and certainly the first time you select it i can help you navigate um which approach right um, it'll be a requirement on the topic selection form anyways so we'll be working through that together just to try to pin it down to the approach and the title before you get onto the portal and actually select it. Any questions at all? 
I'm giving you a second for people to think or type if you're typing. <laughs> All right, I don't see any questions or hear any typing. So let me go back to the presentation. All right, um, next meeting agenda suggestions, any, any as, as usual, any topics you want me to review. I probably will add the new ones uh, to the list uh, for future meetings for topic reviews, since they're new, um, and we, you know, uh, we can take a closer look at them and and, and look at. Uh, typically, when I do topic review, I'll look at the topic requirements, and then we'll look at the um, sample evidence story. Now, the uh, I should mention that the evidence story sample guide hasn't been updated with samples for the new topics yet because they're waiting to collect people using them and kind of they, they sometimes rely on the samples on the evidence stories submitted to um, you know different whole bunch of samples to generate like a, a generic one um, for for the topic. So that's why they haven't updated it yet as they collect um, you know some samples, then they'll create that and they'll update the, um, the evidence story uh, sample guide. So that one has not been updated yet. So there won't be sample evidence stories for the new topics quite yet. It's on their to-do list. All right. So again, email me with any agenda uh, um, ideas, suggestions, uh, so I can make sure that as we develop the agendas that they uh, address things that people want to want to see. Um, and then, uh, and then I, I do the topic reviews or AAR reviews as I get ARs come in th that we can share so we can see what kinds of things validators are sending back for additional evidence required, right? Many of you have, you know, would have, all, I think pretty well almost, almost always now before the issue, the AR, I don't know if it's a, an internal policy or not, but I would say almost always before you get an AAR, you're also going to have had a phone call. So the validator will call you, try to decipher the issue with you. And if it's something that was truly missing, then they'll probably tell you, okay, that's good. Can you make sure you get that together? And I'm going to put it in so that, you know, it's uh, as an AR, so that, uh, it you know, they explain what it is they just told you, right? So, um, or if they're happy with it, they'll tell you and, and then they'll say, oh yeah, okay, that's good. I understand now and I'll mark it complete. So they'll tell you that. But I think uh, a lot of times they seem to be making a phone call before the issue of the AR, which is good because sometimes it can avoid the AR if they just explain something that maybe wasn't clear in your evidence story or in your evidence, right? So the, the more descriptive you are in the evidence story with the evidence aligned, the less chance of an AR is because sometimes you get an, an AR, which is the additional evidence required from a validator that gives you another 60 days to fix the problem. Um, just because you didn't explain it enough in the narrative of the evidence story, right? And that would have avoided it. So a lot of times I will comment on it, you know, give me a little more. Um, if you just put a two word bullet in the narrative for, for do, that's not gonna be enough. It doesn't tell a validator anything of what you did. So you kind of, have to be a little more descriptive in just saying what you did. And then the evidence column will have the evidence to support what you said you did to implement the topic requirements. So you're always guided by the topic requirements. All right. Any questions? I think that's the last part, which is opened up the the floor for any any questions on anything to do with the program. Um, many of you I've talked to to address any specific, uh, you know, uh, 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 issues related to your current cycle, your develop topic development. But if there are any specific questions you might have, 
then uh, this is a chance to to go through that as well. Everybody's very quiet today. I don't think I've heard anyone speak at all. <laughs> all I've seen is texting. <laughs> so you're all busy doing other stuff while I'm talking? All right. All right, I don't see any questions. So um, let's take a look at uh, the next meeting date. Uh, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Probably the end of September. Um, let me take, I'm looking at, uh, say the 20, 29th, which is September 29th is a Friday. I'm just gonna open up my calendar, make sure I don't have any, no, September 29th. Okay, so why don't we go for that same time, 1 p.m. And it's not a long weekend or anything good. <laughs> um, Oh, th uh, somebody suggested Thursdays are better. Uh, well, Thursday, uh, the 28th is already, I have already fully booked. So uh, I can't do that. And the Thursday before I already have fully booked. Um, and I don't want to really move it into October. Uh, so if we don't, like, I, we can try to switch it back to Thursdays next time, but it would mean um, pushing it to October. So if we don't mind, we don't mind you, you know, and again, we, if you, if you can't make one meeting that there's, they're always recorded. So let's go for 1 PM, um, Friday, September 29th. All right. 